Stay connected with KFI News on the hour on the half. And when it breaks, I'm Shannon Farron. So I'm going to his office thinking that I'm going to go meet with blah, 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 right? Because he's an Indian American. I am writing for the Senate. Blah, 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 blah. People always ask me, well, what about high speed rail? I mean, yesterday I was stuck on the 405. I missed receiving my award. <laughs> and I would have to wait sometimes 45 minutes. I am a doer. It is never easy. And now, an update from the John and Ken Loretta Sanchez desk. Here's John and Ken. <laughs> well done. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we have added a new desk. Two things about it. It's the first time we've ever dedicated a desk to a person. As you know, we have the execution desk, the health and science desk, we have the naked desk. But... The other thing about this is it could be short lived because <laughs> <laughs> That's right. she could drop out any day. Right, so we got to do this right away in <laughs> case it only lasts a day. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, though, if she does continue to run and spends months on the campaign trail, there will be plenty of material based on what happened Saturday alone. As you know by now, at the Democratic State Convention in Anaheim, Loretta Sanchez made that noise. <laughs> The war cry noise. Imitating. Which went viral. <laughs> imitating a Native American trying to differentiate between Indian Americans whose ancestry is from India and Native Americans. The headline today in the Orange County Register story, which is funny, it's Martin Whiskell. Loretta Sanchez's unbridled personal style cuts both ways as she campaigns for the U.S. Senate. <laughs> unbridled personal style? Unbridled How personal much, style. Why'd you say the truth? She's bluntly. a ninny. She's, yeah, she's nuts. She's a ninny. She's a pinhead. Uh, We're seeing her on a bigger stage than she's ever been before. Now, when she ran against Dornan years ago, there was focus, but that was... Her first campaign and then her second when she tried to unseat him. Then it all went quiet. Nobody followed her anymore. Nobody followed her races. Except her Christmas cards. And then that thing with the Vietnamese opponent where right. she blew up at the uh, the Vietnamese community trying to take my seat kind of thing. But those didn't get much traction. But when you're running for U.S. Senate, a lot of media is going to cover you because you're going to be one of two senators from oh. the largest state. And, and you're advertising yourself as a groundbreaker, the uh, first Hispanic senator in California's history, right? So you're pressing all those media buttons. It's like, oh, it's diversity time. It's diversity time. She's one of the first. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This there. register story, though, uh, has a couple of good pieces in it. While many Native Americans were offended by Sanchez's gaffe, Chapman University sociologist Paul Apodaca, a Native American who teaches Native American studies, said, hard feelings may not run too deep. Quote, there's probably disappointment, but she's done good work for a long time, and tribes have prospered while she's been in office? You, what does think, that mean? you think he's still generic. prospered? While she's been in office. Is that just coincidental? What are you saying? But he did note that while Native Americans account for less than 1% of California's population, they are big political donors, which is why she really felt she had to apologize for this. In fact, among interest groups that donate money on politicians... Native American uh, groups rank number three. Number one is construction unions. Number two, attorneys. Mm -hmm. Number three, presumably, these are the casinos. They spent nearly $3 million on California legislative races now, in 2011 and 2012, and that was third most of any interest groups. Now, this Paul Apodaca, this Chapman University sociologist, would he have said the same thing if it was a Republican who did uh, the Native American war chant? <laughs> would he be so understanding? The white guy? And, yeah, a white guy. Uh, would he be talking how the tribes have prospered while he's been in office? Of course, what? a Democratic what? delegate by the name of Carol, Carolyn Inman said it was childish, silly, and disrespectful. She coaches speakers from the nonprofit and political realms. That's her job. But she praised Sanchez's quick and thorough apology. This um, is very early. Loretta may be able to recover from this gaff. Is that word again? Sorry. Yeah, we're going to keep uh, bringing it up. Shannon uh, doesn't like the word gaff. Gaff. No, that's that's a word nobody uses in real life. But it's in a quote. I had to. Yeah, I understand. That's um, real life. Uh, by the way, what is what is that's what you just said? What? What does her being a congresswoman in Washington have to do with the casino uh, tribes in California? Because most of the money they spend on California politicians because they want more uh, casinos and slot machines and all the rest so what what would uh 
what would a, a woman who's in the minority party in Washington, what, what influence would she have over this? Maybe she does. They've prospered while she's been in Congress, so there must be a connection. Is she responsible for the drought, too? Meanwhile, though, a Democratic group apparently is unhappy. It's called the California Democratic Party's Native American Caucus. Mm -hmm. And they uh, denounced candidate Loretta Sanchez's character of the Indian war cry. But they also have a grievance with Kamala Harris, her opponent in the race on the Democrat side. Caucus Chairwoman Marianne Andreas of the Morongo Band of Mission Indians said, I believe they both display a lack of understanding and sensitivity to Native American tribal issues and individual Indian issues. What was uh, Kamala Harris's insensitivity? Kamala Harris's insensitivity deals with a border dispute. I know that sounds weird, doesn't it? Border dispute? Yes. The oh, use- one, one, the reservation, one of the reservations? The Colorado River Indian Tribes Reservation Boundaries. She apparently, Harris, filed a legal brief on behalf of an evicted resident by the name of Roger French, who hasn't paid rent in 17 years, is accused of trespassing on tribal lands. However, Harris argues that the disputed land he's on is not part of the reservation. They believe that Harris took that position without studying the facts. (laughs) Oh, wait a second. So it's it's a, it's a dispute whether his home is inside or outside the reservation. Correct. And the so, boundaries of the reservation. This? this makes her racist because She's, her interpretation is he's living outside the reservation. And they say no. Yeah. Well, that's that's not that's not racist. That's just They a, also said that they she took that position without discussing the issue with the tribe or quote concern to the facts. I guess they took umbrage. <laughs> wow. What do you do with umbrage after you take them? Uh I guess you I don't know. He put it in the closet because she did not present herself to them and discuss the issue you with wear, them when they were trying to evict this. Can guy. you wear umbrage? Uh, you could on your uh, head, I think. <laughs> the uh, caucus, meanwhile, said uh, their comments and actions provide little assurance that they grasp the government-to-government relationship guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution in the issue. Right. So. You know, I just, uh, I just don't even recognize this country anymore. In a response, so nuts. Kamala Harris's campaign spokeshole, Nathan Click, good name, Click, said that Kamala has a deep respect for California's sovereign Indian nations and Native Americans. Of course. She, she looks forward to discussing who will best represent the interest of Native Americans and all Californians <laughs> over the course of this campaign. Because let's go back to that number, John, right? $2.9 million. $2.9 million. Ding, ding, ding. Click, click, click. It's, uh, it's all about casinos. I mean, anybody that follows ballot initiatives over the last 10 years a number of them came from you know an indian tribe they sponsored it they wanted it on the ballot for one it's usually dealing with john said right the casinos and land issues why is this why is the state regulating that anyway just if it's their land let them do what they want right it's indian reservation land it's it's sacred land it's land that uh because we stole from them we ban casinos or at least the vegas type except, of casino except they well, sell they do have some of them yeah but they, if you if you pony up enough uh political contributions on indian reservations they're not banned they're constantly expanding and i don't care I, they could turn the whole reservation into a casino if they want i don't know why they have to suck up and spend millions of dollars uh trying to legally bribe these uh oily politicians if that's oh. what they want to do with their land let them do what they want why, why does anybody care but they want to, the politicians want to hold them uh, hold the reservations for ransom. It's like no more casinos unless you pay us off. We want a kickback. By the way, Loretta Sanchez has a campaign co-chairman, a cranky old guy by the name of Wiley Aiken, who we ran into years ago when he tried to stop the Great Davis recall. Oh yeah, I remember that. He's worked on our yeah. He declared the signatures invalid or something like Didn't that. Did he come he was, on our show once? Oh yeah, he yeah. was cranky. He was a crackpot. Yeah, uh, he's got to be a hundred now. Anyway. He says, I don't think this is going to have any effect on us in the long run. It could slow us down for a day or two. She's refreshing. She does make mistakes, but that's what makes her human and what makes her likable, she's referring re- to Sanchez. She's the sound of refreshment, huh? No, she is, Is yeah. that what refreshment sounds Open like? Open that can. <laughs> oh. That's a bubbly that you'd love to guzzle <laughs> yes. that voice. La, 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 la. Have a can of Loretta. I am going to even said it! <laughs> I can't get that high pitch, though. No. Well, there uh, it is, the Loretta Sanchez desk. We'll wheel go. it out when necessary. Yeah, we rented this desk, though.
Because uh, it is a, I, it is a rental. I don't project. think we're going to need it very long. <laughs> I, I am running for the Senate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and a lot of people may be happy about that. Uh, KFI AM six forty. John and Ken show. John Cobell and Ken Champ.